You ever walked into a party or a bar, saw someone that you wanted to talk to, and suddenly just froze up? Your mind goes blank, you can't move, you're completely paralyzed, and the longer that you wait and hesitate, the worse that it gets until you're completely locked in. What if I told you there's a way to stop that approach anxiety before it even starts? And this method is so powerful, it makes approaching people feel automatic, even fun, where you're actually enthusiastic about doing it. So today I'm going to break down the simple steps to build social momentum so you never freeze up again. So if you're ready to stop standing against the wall with your, your drink pressed against your chest in the, the chode mode pose, let's go. What we're talking about here is the idea of building social momentum. If you ever take a boot camp with me, we'll meet up, we'll go over some preliminary things, and then we'll head out to a club or a bar. And when we first get in there, it might seem scary at first to think about interacting with all these different people throughout the evening, but by the end of the night, it'll feel far more natural. And this is where the concept of social momentum comes into play. Initially, when you enter a club or any social environment, you might feel a certain inertia, right? Or a homeostasis. There's a resistance to switching from this logical mode that you might have been in all day to this fun, outgoing mode. This resistance, it isn't necessarily about fear, but in my opinion, it's more about transitioning out of a comfortable state. In other words, you're sitting there and you're thinking to yourself, maybe not even verbalized in your mind, but you're like, I feel fine now. If I go and start talking to these people, I might not feel fine. Right? I might get embarrassed. I might lose validation. I might get humiliated. I might get into a confrontation of some sort. Look, I experienced this too. Even after 22 years of going out and doing this far more than any normal person, I will still feel a moment of reluctance to do that initial approach when I first hit the scene, right? And it's not really that I'm scared per se, but simply because I'm transitioning from one mindset to another, Right? It's like getting into a cold pool. You know it's going to be fine. And that initial discomfort when you get in, it doesn't last very long. It's fleeting. It's temporary. But you've got to make that initial plunge before that tension takes hold and paralyzes you into inaction. It's like if you're at the top of a high dive, right? say like the, the big high diving board, and you look down, you're like, oh, it's, it's far down. It's like 30 feet down. It looked a lot less high when I was on the ground. And if you kind of just mentally, talk, if, if you talk yourself out of it, the next thing you know, now you got to crawl back down the ladder while everyone laughs at you because you're a pussy, right? <laughs> so you got to take the plunge before that tension takes hold and paralyzes you into inaction, right? There's an inertia to action and there's an inertia to inaction. The longer that you stand around and don't do anything, the harder it's going to be to snap out of that. And the beauty of social momentum is that once you actually start engaging, you start approaching, you start interacting, it gets a lot easier. And in fact, it actually becomes fun, right? It's about taking that first step. It just, just like jumping into the cold pool in the morning. And I don't care if you're Michael fucking Phelps, no matter how many times you jumped into that cold pool, there is going to be that resistance to state change. And initially it might feel cold. It might feel uncomfortable, but very quickly, almost immediately, in fact, you adapt and you start enjoying the experience. It was having fun swimming around in the pool. Like for me, it usually takes one, maybe two approaches for me to remember that I'm hilarious and awesome. It's like, oh, oh yeah, right. What was I thinking? I, I'm good at this. Let's go. And then I, then I get into the flow. So as the night progresses and you interact more, you're going to build that momentum. It's like a snowball effect. The more that you engage, the more natural and fun it becomes. And remember, the key is just to start. It, it's just to start. Like, don't worry about being perfect or even getting a good outcome at the very beginning. Focus on the process of engaging, of interacting, and just enjoying the environment, right? Having fun in the social environment. And that's how you build and maintain social momentum. Again, I'm very aware of my psychological tendencies and predilections to avoid state change by now. And I know personally, if I don't build momentum, it's real easy to get, again, locked into that state where you can't take any action at all. I've been there more times than you probably ever will in your entire life, right? That's how I can speak about this with confidence. So to combat this tendency, I personally have developed a process that I use to very consistently attain a positive, a fun, engaging state that is attractive to people, a vibe that's fun and makes people pay attention to you, especially when I'm not naturally in that headspace already. This process I'm talking about here, it's, it's very useful, not just at the start of the night, 
but anytime you need a boost, right? Like after an interaction that say didn't go so well as you might have hoped. <laughs> and, you know, these steps, like I said, these are field tested. These are a tried and true method to get your head back in the game to ensure a successful session. So let's go through each step. Number one, first and foremost, as soon as you enter the venue, you've got 30 seconds to talk to somebody. And that the very first step is just engage with someone, anyone. And this doesn't mean just those people that you're interested in or attracted to, but literally anyone around you is fair game, right? Some random old dude standing there, whatever. And just have a quick conversation with them, 30 seconds, just, just to give your brain the proof that it needs in order to feel okay about approaching people, right? My buddy Owen talks about this idea, your brain wants proof, not promises. That monkey brain's telling you humiliation equals death. And logically, you know that that's not the case. You're like, nothing bad's going to happen. It'll be fine. But that, that midbrain, it, it doesn't want your little florid language. It's like, I don't care about your little promises. Show me the proof. And that 30-second little interaction you have with the random dude standing there about the weather or about the, the bar or whatever it is, that's going to give it the proof. You're like, oh, shit, I'm still here. I'm not vaporized. Okay, maybe I can actually do this. That's the proof. If you find it, challenging or intimidating to approach somebody that you're highly attracted to like right off the bat when you when you walk in practicing on let's say less intimidating interactions earlier in the evening can actually build your confidence right it's about getting into the, the right headspace and being ready for when you do meet somebody who captures your imagination so you, you want to minimize the gap between the time you see someone and the time that you take action, you decide to approach and you go up. Like very often when you see somebody that you're interested in, I've noticed a lot of people just hesitate. Like, oh, oh what am I going to say? What am I saying? Or even worse, they start rationalizing reasons to not approach almost immediately. It's just like, oh, well, you know, she's to this, that, or the next thing. Oh, 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 the, there's a guy there. Oh, there's a guy there. Oh, I'll wait till they move out of that little area. It's not logistically perfect. It's a big group, da, 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 et cetera, et cetera. And then in many cases, by the time you finally kind of screwed up the courage, you know, got the nerve to actually approach, now it's going to seem all contrived and fucking weird, like a, like a weirdo doing weird shit because it's not spontaneous. There's a power in that spontaneity. And I had a mentor many years ago, my buddy Tim from Australia, you old OGs might remember him. He's like, again, you want to minimize the gap between the time you see him and the time you start walking over. The closer you can get that to zero the more powerful your approach is going to be, All right? So that's number one. Number two is minimize time between interactions. This is very, very important. You want to keep that momentum going and build up a head of steam by minimizing any downtime between your approaches. And the less time that you spend derping around and hesitating, the more you maintain a flow, the more you confidence you're going to build. So again, you really want to focus on hitting a rhythm, like go, 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 go. You don't up approach and then stand around for five minutes. Approach, go get a drink. Approach, talk to your buddy for five minutes. It's like, no, go, 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 go. Until when? The goal here is to reach what I like to call the enthusiasm threshold, right? Where you're not just indifferent to approaching now, but you're actually excited about doing the next one. You're like, all right, what's next? What's next? So to hit this state, it's very important that you got to keep the pace up, right? Imagine it's, it's like a video game where you got to, for some reason, you got to get over some power threshold. And to do so, you have to like keep hitting the buttons da -da 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 to build the power until you hit that threshold. And if you slow down, the power drops quickly. But once you hit the zone, you maintain your energy, you maintain the enthusiasm. So the idea is to keep moving from one interaction to the next without breaks, like lingering too long in the aftermath, like having these lengthy, unrelated conversations. This can lead to a disruption of your social rhythm, let's just say. And again, you want to hit that nice flow. You're just boom, 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 boom. On a boot camp program, myself and my assistant coaches are going to be there with you the entire time, like enthusiastically encouraging you to take action and not permitting that downtime. And again, very often I'll see other people who are trying to do it in the, in the venue who aren't students and they're just derping around, talking to each other about some bullshit. Meanwhile, my students are hitting that flow and then they're getting results, Right. By us pushing you like that to beyond your condition boundaries to take action, that helps you hit that threshold where you actually start to have fun and it stops being this slog through the mud and you start enjoying yourself. And that's when the whole game changes, right? That's when other people actually start responding to you positively. For a lot of people, boot camp 
it, frankly, it's a catalyst that changes their entire fucking life because they now understand that distinction on a very visceral level. And after that, your social life will never be the same. All right. So that's step two, take mad action. All right. Minimize time between interactions. Step three, don't judge yourself. Every interaction is, it's a learning experience, right? It's not some referendum uh, on your value as a human being. It doesn't fucking matter. It might as well be a dream. You know, a lot of people I see, they come out of an interaction where the person didn't respond favorably and they'll be kind of just really down on themselves. So I want, want, want. And then, of course, it becomes this self-fulfilling prophecy and they go into like a shame spiral and they're, they're circling the drain of despair and their night just goes down, down, down. So instead of berating yourself, acknowledge not every interaction is going to go perfectly and, and that's completely fine. There's an element of randomness. You don't know who you're, you're talking to. You don't know what's going on in their life. You could say the pitch perfect thing and they might not respond well, right? And again, it doesn't really matter because it, it, like if you're in sales, you know that most, especially if you're doing cold outreach, most deals don't close. It's just called being mature and not taking it so personally. Just the act of approaching and, and engaging in a cold approach in and of itself, it sets you apart from like 90% of the population. The vast majority of people will never venture beyond their comfort zones or their immediate social circles. They go out with the same people all the time and they go home with the same people all the time. Maybe Sarah's cousin from out of town comes this time, but, but that's it. By stepping up and initiating conversations with strangers, you're already showing a level of courage and, and social initiative that it, it's, extremely, it's extremely rare, quite frankly. So recognize that. You know, every approach is 100 out of 10, just by virtue of the fact that you actually did it. Even if it's like a negative outcome, quote unquote, it's adding to your set of data points, right, that you can then begin to extrapolate patterns from for best practices. Every failure is a brick in my palace. And that stuck with me from, from 20 years ago, remains true today. When you walk away from an interaction, really just resist that urge to start to dissect it negatively. I mean, you could do that later after the session. Right? There, there's a time and place for that. But again, right after, just focus on the fact that you made the approach. And again, you're one step closer to becoming more socially skilled. It's all about growth. It's about learning, not about your batting average of success or failure. Regardless of how an interaction goes, always focus on what was funny about it. Like literally, like what, even if it was some terrible response, be like, dude, my God, that, you hear what she said to me? That, that was fucking crazy. <laughs> okay, ouch. All right, what's next, man? What's next, right? Keep that positive mindset. This keeps your spirits up. It prevents you from going into that downward spiral, right? And staying in a good emotional state, it's quite frankly more attractive and engaging to the people around you. It keeps the good vibe up. Nobody wants to be around some fucking depressed sourpuss who's bringing their night down. Remember, one of the core principles of social interaction is, you know, emotional contagion, that mirror neuron effect, the idea that your emotions and your state of mind can influence people around you, like whatever you feel, they feel. So for this reason, it's very important to be genuinely enjoying yourself before you approach. I'd even go so far as to say it's a prerequisite for success. If you're having a good time, it's more likely that the people you talk to were also gonna, are also going to enjoy your company, point blank. You know, a lot of times excuse me, I'll send a student in and he'll kind of like trudge over like like he's marching to his execution or something. And then they get a couple feet away and then they turn it on, right? They're like, hey, excuse me, her, da, 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 right? And, and they go in. Okay, so let's say the person they approach, you know, it, it doesn't work out and they leave shortly thereafter. And as soon as the other person leaves, you'll see the student go, and trudge back over, right? Reverting immediately to that down state, womp, womp, womp. I mean, look, you'll very rarely find me or any of my assistant coaches standing around looking disengaged, <clears throat> right? I'm always moving. I'm always tapping to the beat. I'm interacting playfully with the environment and keeping my energy up. And this isn't just for show. It's about keeping myself in a positive, energetic state. Remember, motion creates emotion. By staying physically active, by staying engaged, you're priming yourself for positive interaction. You don't have to turn it on they're going by and you can just pull people right in. Whether it's joking with my friends, you know, dancing to the music or simply just smiling and enjoying the environment, right? enjoying the moment. Keeping that positive energy flowing is vital. And that's it. Remember, social momentum, it's all about taking that first step and keeping the energy flowing. So quit derping on the sidelines, hoping that somebody's gonna see how fucking cool you look and make the first move, because they're not. So if you're ready to take things to the next level, you can check out the link in the description for more info on the bootcamp programs happening all over the US and Europe. I can't wait to see you there and help you transform your social life. This has been Jeffy, 
and I'll see you next time. Yeah.